Hello, hello guys. It's been a while. Was pretty busy lately. Today's video is going to be about geolocation and Blazor. Uh, how to do that. Um, we're going to use the built-in browser API uh, for the geolocation to get the current user's position. I made a it's in my native language, main locasi, it's my location. If I click this button, I want to get my coordinates. Can use geolocation is true. Let's look at the example. So it's in JavaScript. There's also a Nougat package already made if you want to use that. Um, but I didn't really see an implementation, just the interface with some callback methods, uh, but no examples how to use it. So I'm just going to code it in JavaScript and use the JavaScript interrupt to call that. We're just going to do it ourselves. Basically, uh, a better example is here from the Mozilla documentation. And what we can see is, let's look at this line. First, we check if we can use the JavaScript built-in browser geolocation uh, API by seeing if there's if navigator.geolocation is undefined, if it's undefined, we can't use it. It's not supported in our browser. Um, we can simply use that for a sec. Um, and if we can use it, we can just call the get current position. And this has two callback functions, which is uh, quite annoying. Uh, success and error and success. Uh, the position will get passed along, which looks like position. It's an object position dot coordinates, yeah, chords dot latitude and longitude. And this is actually what we should get in our Blazor application by using the JavaScript interrupt. So let's quickly try that in the browser. I already implemented it, but let's see navigator.geolocation, which returns a uh, a valid object with a few uh, functions invocable methods. So it's uh, supported in our Chrome browser. As, as expected. And let's now uh, do the same check in our Blazor application. Going to the code. Let's close everything. So this leisure here is my Blazor application. I'm using the pre-rendered uh, setup. So that means it has, it's partly Blazor server, partly Blazor WebAssembly. It's actually pre-rendered Blazor WebAssembly, but that means we have a host.html in the pages. Oh, sorry, the layout.html, CSHTML. And underneath here, we'll have to add a a new JavaScript file. I made this in my, uh, yeah, in the Razor class library. Um, if you want to see how I did this, I have videos about that. Um, let's see. So this shared SPA project is in here. And then the WW root, the JS folder, and then the geolocation file. And then over here, I have a simple function, can use geolocation, which um, checks whether this uh, geolocation object exists. 
so it's not undefined and we'll retur return it as a boolean value so true or false uh, because of these double exclamation marks let's ignore the rest for now let's uh, now we have to call this function with the JavaScript interrupt from Blazor. I also did this in the shared SPA, so the Razor class library, and configured it in uh, my services. So I just made a geolocation service with an interface of SPA geolocation service, which lives in the services folder, geolocation folder uh, service. And it injects the JS runtime. And then it has a value task function with a return value of a Boolean can use geolocation, which invokes the JavaScript can use geolocation function. So let's now head to the actual Blazor application. So this is my server side this is my client side we have to make sure we have i implemented this shared spa function so where i registered the geolocation service i have videos about doing all that stuff um, if it's a bit confusing because i already have built a lot and so now to call this by clicking on this menu item we have to go to let's see yep, not that the component content search bar let's find the my location option on click get current location and then here we do a try catch, which uh, gets the value from our yeah from our can use geolocation method, which calls the JavaScript can use geolocation. So all the way to our component, and then I log it just uh, for demonstration purposes and you see can use geolocation through it's great and i check if i can't use the geolocation there is no point in continuing so i just short circuit this and return add a logging statement and then i call the next method I hope I didn't miss anything to uh, wire all of this up so you can easily replicate it. So the next one is to get the actual location. Now we know that we can get that we can use the uh, JavaScript API. So let's take a look at that method. Yeah, I made a function object. You can ignore that. I was still building on that. Oop. Um, okay, that's doing something similar. Yeah, ignore this return type. We're going to invoke async a JavaScript method, get current location, which lives in the same JavaScript file in the WW root of our Razor class library. Okay, and that's this async function, get current location. Let's comment this out for now. So normally it's just navigator dot geolocation dot get current position. And now it takes see if the yeah feel free to pause the video to read this we basically need to pass along two callback functions success callback and error callback so i wrote those here 
success and error so you can just do success these are, these are not names you'll you'll want kind of vague names for this but anyway but the issue now is we're not getting anything even if we do something like return we're not getting uh these coordinates in our blazer which is unfortunate but we have a workaround the workaround is to make a promise of this function to return a promise um yeah if you're not familiar with javascript with with the old days um yeah, promise is just something you can uh, async await, so to speak. Uh, it's similar like a callback function, like the result happens after X amount of time. Uh, so you can't directly return it. I'm not going to get into this any further, uh, but yeah, there's, think three ways to get the result from a promise. One is um, by using a callback, but we can't use that in this use case. The second one would be to have a, yeah, to make it into a promise and then do, let's see, something like this. Shouldn't really go into this, but um, then call the actual. Let's see if we can something like this, and then do the then, which will then have the result. Should have the result, and then we can do something with it. But that's also not what we want because we can't really get this result back into the Blazor application. So the third option is to, uh, is very similar. And it's over here. So we are creating a new promise, which will await to get the result, which has two callback functions. You could also call these uh, success and error, actually. Um, let's see. And then we call the actual method. So get current position. Then the first uh, parameter is actually the, the, like the success callback function. We're just gonna, yeah, this is just a function. And then the second parameter is the error callback. And we're actually going to, so this should have the position if I'm not mistaken, yep. Then we could resolve the position and but reject, we just do nothing. But we probably want the coordinates. Let's actually console load this. If we can. Because it's a, an object. Now we can get rid of these. And let's try that. So we basically wrapped the original method uh, with a new promise. And once this one completes, we, yeah, we resolve. So we return the result of this method to the wrap, wrapper promise. And this should work in our service. Let's adjust. Uh, this, that's just going to be object probably. And 
let's alter okay and let's see where we implement it not sure i'm going to json serialize this because it's an object can't just log it i think let's rebuild and run the application okay so i have my application open okay i'm finally getting it out I was struggling a bit with the code. Um, I cleaned it up like this. I wanted to one line it, but unfortunately uh, that didn't work. So now it's like this. So we're extracting the, the chords object from uh, whatever is resolved and passing it to our blazer as an array of double so i've got the value task of double i put the question mark in to uh yeah just in case it errors um we should probably handle that a bit better in here um since there are re reasons the user can manually this uh decline using location and all those uh, or just a, an internet connection error or something. Anyway, we're getting the location out. And I think I either I'm going to do some better error handling or I'm going to end the video here. The purpose of the coordinates, so now that we have them, we want, I want to um, filter results by these, by this current location. So I want to pass the current location to the backend, which then searches the database for, yeah, content of a specific type um, within, for example, a five mile radius of, or five kilometers radius from the given, from the user's current location. Let's quickly see what happens if I cancel the, or decline the location. Uh, let's see, block, let's try it. And then we get a, get that geolocation position error. And we actually got another try catch. So I think that's actually enough. Yeah, I think that's, that's fine. We don't want to uh, yeah, do anything besides logging it or something. So, or uh, yeah, let the user know we couldn't access the location because it's turned off on the device or something. Uh, so uh, that's all for this video. Next video will be to pass this current location to our database and find the nearest content. Ciao.